Welcome to the video guys and happy 2022. So I'm currently in two trades. This is gonna be a full day of trading once again. Yesterday I didn't take any trades, yesterday was Monday, today is Tuesday, I'm in two trades. So I'm in Euro dollar long and pound yen short. So pretty active day for me, especially taking two trades because usually like the max I'll take per day is like two, usually on a busy day. So today is quite busy. So we just need to be fully focused on the markets. I'm gonna show you the trades now. So this is Euro dollar. This is Euro dollar. Remember, not every trade is gonna be a winner, but this one is running. So this one is Euro dollar long. Let me just back out a little bit for you. All right, so this is Euro dollar long, which is currently running, risk free. Uh, I haven't taken a partial, but I'm about to. And then this is pound yen, which is running as well. So just let me get ready to take a partial on this one. Hold on guys, bear with me. Um, 16, 14, 3, 1, 2, 2. Right, so all I'm doing now is I'm getting ready to close a portion of the position because price is almost at three to one. If it doesn't get there, that's fine. Risk is off the table. But if it gets there, perfect, I'll take a partial and at least then I've taken profit from the position. So we're not there yet though. Still a little bit more to go. So we will see what happens, but yeah. Could take a little bit more time. So I'm just gonna put the camera back on me, but yeah, overall, I'll let you know if take a partial, by the way. Um, camera doesn't even look straight here. This is what you call raw in the moment footage. But yeah, so um, just in the two trades, it's I've only taken probably four or five trades in the year so far. Last week was overall like a break even week because I took I think I took three losses last week one win and then a couple break even so pretty slow week for me but because it was the first week of 2022 it was almost just getting my feet wet a little bit just warming up in the markets I, I did take uh, two weeks off or one and a half weeks at least over Christmas and um, went down to London which was insane just really nice to recharge went to like a really nice hotel and then just completely just refreshed didn't even look at the markets for about a good one and a half two weeks which was just something that i've never ever done before so ever since i've been in my trading journey i've never really taken a bunch of time off i think my, my you know i've probably taken three or four days off before just need to take a partial in a minute hold on um this is a, a very busy uh thing but um yeah so it was really nice to go to london went to a new hotel called pan pacific which was insane everything was top quality i'm definitely going to go back there again it's quite expensive but i just really need, wanted somewhere to recharge refresh went there with my partner it's really nice to spend time away for christmas so i really enjoyed that um, taking a partial three to one <laughs> taking a partial three to one here on your dollar so that is there But yeah, overall, just really happy to be back, back trading. And you just realize when you take time away, when you come back, how much you actually love and care for trading. Like I love trading. Um, so super stoked this year, super stoked to see where I can take things. Last year, I did expect to essentially scale. I didn't really scale last year, I'm gonna be completely honest. Last year was a lot of learning. It was only really Q3, Q4 that I was really focused on my results and improving the results. But Q1, Q2 was just learning new new things, new concepts, trying to implement them, trying to figure out my own way of implementing them, put my own twist on things. Like it was a lot of that learning process again. And that's how I, I that's how I structure my trading journey overall. I like to go through a learning period, pause that learning period, and then focus on the results for a bit and then improve the overall game. It's almost like the, the inchworm theory from the mental game of poker. So you bring your A game up. The C game is obviously going to be lagging behind. You bring the C game up and then you go forward again. So it's a never ending improvement journey. 
but just super grateful for this year and I've got some big goals so I'm really excited to hit them and yeah looking forward to it but I'm going to keep you updated on these positions taking partials on both um, pounding is pulling back slightly so I'll see how that forms euro dollars just pausing and pulling back as well so throughout the day I'm going to keep you updated but I'm going to, going to go and grab some breakfast because it's 20 to 12 and I haven't even eaten yet so I'm going to grab some food just a quick update on the position, so Euro dollar is running quite nicely, so smashed through the take profit zone in terms of the partial, so price is just continuing. As we can see on the lower time frame, price is just starting to form a another correction, potentially continuation for higher prices based on this impulsive leg here, so looking to see higher prices from here potentially, and yeah, just looking for further intentions really for higher prices. Second one is obviously pound yen, so pound yen is still, once again, running nicely. It's smashed through this previous swing low on the M15, M5. Now just looking for further continuation of lower prices. So just gonna really see how these develop really. These are interesting points with them both. I'm just keen to see what kind of happens next really. So yeah, I'll keep you updated, but these are the positions. The timing changes, so now I'm getting up a little bit later, but you still have to be your own boss. Like, although you have a boss now, that boss will eventually be yourself, so you have to keep yourself on track. So I don't have a boss anymore, but I still make myself get up at a certain time and then follow through in certain habits and you know work blocks throughout the day and stay on track with like I'm still doing daily goals, I've been doing it for like four or five years. Just taking them off, keeping on top of you know my routine, my own schedule. Because without that I know for a fact it's very easy to slip into bad habits and then before you know it you're just in a negative cycle of momentum, which is not what you want to do. We've got goals to hit. Right, so it's currently 25 past 3, I'm going to head to the gym soon. Um, with those two trades, so I didn't give you an update because I was doing other things, but took a break even on both, so Euro dollar pulled back before pound yen, so Euro dollar pulled back, took me out for break even, however, I did take a partial on both, so it took a 3 to 1 partial, 20% volume, which is usual standard for me, at 3 to 1, so it took away a small bit of profit on both. Um, but overall, great trades, regardless of the outcome. It's never about the outcome, remember? It's very easy, and I've slipped into the habit sometimes of associating the outcome of individual trades, and it's very it's very easy to do subconsciously too. You know, you can think you're doing something, but it's very easy to, for bad habits to creep in, and that's what happened to me in December when I realized I was paying too much attention to the outcome of individual trades. So. That's really been my focus come January, is just focus on the series of trades again. And it's something that you just gotta do consistently until it becomes subconscious. And I've done it in the past, obviously, but it's clearly a bad habit has crept in, so I've just sorted it out, recognized it, tweaked it, and now it's just about maintaining that level of peak performance. So yeah, great trades, and happy with the way I took them, happy with everything about them, stuck to my system, stuck to my entry criteria, that is the key thing. You don't want to be too focused on outcome, like I said before. It's so much more important to focus on the fact that you stuck to your plan, you stuck to the criteria, you did everything right, you followed your system, and if you've got correct systems in place, that's going to play out over the course of the long term. You know, the best thing about, I feel like, scaling trading is you want to be focused on systems, you want to be focused on processes, routines. All this kind of stuff may seem like cliche stuff, but as you start to progress more and more and more, you'll realize the significance, especially of systems, processes, and routines, all very important in different aspects of trading. So yeah, um, charts right now, give you a quick look into it. So, let me just zoom out a bit. So yeah, this is the chart that I have right now. Uh, this is the one hour time frame and this is pound yen. So I obviously took a sell in the supply. So price tapped in into supply zone. I then dropped to the lower time frames confirmation. Took a trade, that's where the trade originated from and took the entry itself. Obviously it pulled back to break even but completely found the entry. It sticks to my plan, it fits everything that I'm about and happy with the trade overall. So that is the trade itself. But yeah, like I said before, just about to hit the gym. Um, I'm going to go and train with a friend, so that should be really good. And yeah, I'll catch you all in a bit. Right, so it's towards the end of the day now. It's half five. It's a little bit earlier than what I usually would do this, but 
it is what it is. Every day is slightly different. But today I'm gonna to be doing my mock-ups at this time. Usually it's around about between seven and eight, but a little bit earlier tonight. So just to explain my process, I'll try my best to, to show you this next time as much as possible. Just so, you, just so you completely understand it. And if you want to implement it yourself, you can. It's very simple. It just requires discipline to stick to. But basically what I do is I split my process into two sections essentially. Morning forecast, evening forecast. That's something I've always really done. It's just changed ever so slightly, but not too much. Um, still following the same procedure. So what I basically do is that once I'm sat at my desk in the morning, once I'm ready for actually trading or before London session, let's say, that's when I sit down to the markets and that's when I'll break down price action, I'll break down structure, I'll break down you know, what I see in the markets and what I'm reading and how I'm reading the intentions. So what I'll do, I'll take a higher time frame screenshot. Well, I'll go through to the weekly, daily, four hour, one hour, 15 minute, five minute, lower time frame stuff and I'll just break down what I see happening for that day. And then what I'll do is I'll take a higher time frame screenshot. So if price taps into certain areas or moves into certain areas of you know, price and I'm looking to take a buy or a sell, I'll mark that on the chart and I'll, I'll say, for example, you know, something like if price moves into this area, that's when I'm looking to observe price, see what happens. And then if the buy or sell scenario occurs, I'll just take the trade. So it's almost just accountability to myself. It's almost just good to keep track of that performance. So if anything slips, then I, I'm going to know straight away like that what's happened. But it's just to maintain good performance throughout the days of the week. And for me, it's always worked. It works now. It worked back then. So it's something that I've just carried through. So I'll take a higher time frame screenshot. Now, when I say higher time frame, it's mainly the one hour because you know the daily, the weekly don't really change too much throughout the week. Yes, you're going to get subtle differences, but it's more so the one hour the four hour, 15 minute and sub, that isn't gonna change quite a lot. So I'll take a before screenshot on the one hour chart. And then at the end of the day, let's say today I've taken two trades. I'll take a after screenshot of the higher time frames. in this case, the one hour chart again, see what's played out, see if, you know, I actually, also it's about getting it right. I could be completely wrong, but it's about learning for that day what's happened, why has it happened. It's almost just back testing in the moment. So I'll take an after higher time frame screenshot and then I'll dig onto the lower time frames and I'll just start marking things out with the annotation tool. What's happened, what trades did I take, this and that, just small things like that. Um, it's got a lot more simplified as I've just learned more things. And yeah, that's just accountability. Three screenshots then just go into my essentially journal and I'll just keep track of that. And then at the end of the month, I'll just go back and I'll just revisit them, see what I've learned. And it just allows you month to month to month just to see that progression. Like for example, I first started doing this, I think last March. So it's been almost a year now. So if I was to go back to March, which I did a couple months ago, you see that progression. Things have changed massively in just in terms of my knowledge, what's going on, my systems in place, processes, just little small differences, not, well, technically it is massive things, but those subtle things you change over time are, are crucial to the development. So yeah, really I always look forward to markups because it's just my time alone just to like focus, learn, and I just really enjoy it. So that's what I'm gonna get into now, and then I'm gonna go and hit a workout.